You're now listening to the 11:30 podcast. Enjoy the show. What it do, everybody? It's your man Dre, aka Dre on Wheels. Y'all already know what it is, man. Welcome back, everyone. Yo, I'm back. Yo, it's the 11:30 podcast. What's good, everybody? Going out there, we made it back here, you guys, man. I kept the date before I left. I said it. September 28th is Wednesday. We here, man. I'm in the building. It's time for the podcast. For real. Good morning to everyone who's uh, tuning in and watching here on YouTube. You dig, man? Thank you, guys. So so much, man. It's been it been three months. It really been three months. It's been that long since I've been uh podcasting, man. But yo, a lot have changed. I'm gonna get into it for real. We get into a lot. Uh, if you're new to the podcast and if you haven't done so already, for real, hit that subscribe button down below. Yes, like it, leave a comment, and do all that great stuff. And don't forget to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, like I said, man, yo, it's been three months. As you can see, man, the 1130 podcast is back. Man, woo, like I said, man, it's been a minute. I'm excited. I'm ready to get into it. But uh, before I get into it, man, and tell you guys, man, uh, where I've been, man, and uh, what's been going up, obviously, you guys know I'm a dad now. Um, I'm a father. Yo, like, true. Like, man, I'm going to get into it. But, yo, I got an amazing guest that's going to be joining me later on in the show, you guys. Yes, a returning guest of the 1130 Podcast, man. One of the dope guests uh, here on the 1130 Podcast. My guy, Jimmy IV. He's the creator, the host, the entrepreneur of the Sexy Cool Lounge. And yes, man, he's going to be stopping past and stopping by here on the 1130 Podcast, chopping it up, having some dope vibes, man. For real, that's going to be uh, real, real smooth. But uh, you guys, man. Yo, man, like I said, three months, uh, man, the last episode was in June, and just a, a whole bunch uh, mentally was going on uh, in, in, in my mind, in my head, you know, uh, we're preparing for the birth of my son, you know, and just dealing with the whole podcast thing and not really wanting to take a break but hearing so many individuals around me here say man yo you you, you missed the consistency and man you, you you do it big man so and if you do that take that break man is it's worth it and boy man, man uh was it worth it man was it worth it i did some growing some learning and uh man if, if you ain't done some growing some type of growing in three months man something wrong with you but uh Yo, man, just, and I was saying to myself over the last couple of weeks, man, I can't wait to come back to podcast because, and I'm I'm actually home. I'm actually in in the room that I was going to be my son's, you know, we, we, uh, he's he's still, he's two months right now, but we're going to get the room together and, you know, it's going to be his and stuff and, you know, decorate it, but I'm I'm back home and I haven't been home, man, since, uh, I want to say April. I want to say April, and it was a whole lot of, you know, going back and forth, um, you know, where it was, a, you know, at the hotel or, you know, at my fiance house, and I, I just didn't really have a moment in what to say, I, to, 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 to sort of say, uh, let me get my words right, I didn't have a moment to kind of like, ah, uh, man, and just, you know, let it out, especially after, um, after my brother, he got killed in April a big, big, big reason why I started podcasting, and uh, it was a couple of weeks ago that I came to the realization that my brother's purpose uh, for coming into my life was to help me find my purpose when I got lost in life, and I, I sat there, and I was like, I was dumbfounded in a way. Now, I know some people probably just like, man, wow, that's, you know, like, I mean, yeah, my brother came in contact with so many different individuals, but to me, you know, that was my big brother. He was, you know, a role model, a male, you know, that male figure in my life that taught me a lot of things that I didn't learn. That now I know that, yo, man, I I, I want to be the best dad, you know, that I can be toward my son. But, you know, um, just 
just him, you know, passing, and I was just like, yo, I I think, you know, he he was the reason why I got all this, you know, going because I had all dreams, and I talked about it numerous of times of, you know, me wanting to always have my own show and do all this, but before he passed, man, he always was like, man, you know what you want to do, go at it, and man, I I got the ball rolling, and right after that. It was just, you know, not just being at home, man. Like I said, my fiance at that point, I think she was about like five and a half, going on to six months. And my fiance was, a, uh, her pregnancy was very high risk because, you know, she, you know, got a kidney issue and stuff like that. And I also, because we we are in a wheelchair, we, you know, we have disabilities and stuff like that. And so going to the doctors every week and or every month. So, but when it got down to probably, I think what, with the six month or seven month, she was, you know, at the doctors almost every every week. And man, from DC, everybody from, from DC knows that Metro Excess, uh man, they are some of the terrible, terrible transportation uh services out there. Now, yes, I use it, I gotta use it to get the point A to B, but boy, oh boy, that was really exhausting, man. And then out in the heat and stuff like that, but just just and not only that was exhausting though, but just the anxiety that it was just wearing, you know, me down because I'm just so nervous and anxious of just like, yo, man, I can't wait to see my son, you know, uh, am I going to be a great dad? I know a lot of people always say, yo, man, you're going to be a great father. And man, I, I, I'm doing a wonderful job right now. And I, I thank everyone for the major support, everyone who showed up at the baby shower. Shout out to uh sis April. Yo, for real, man. She 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 did the damn thing for uh turning everything out for the decorations and uh putting everything together. So definitely shout out to sis April, man. For real. That was that was really, really huge. So then July comes, man. And July is a pretty, you know, smooth month, but man, you know, like I said, my fiance is high risk. So we go into the doctors each and every week. And my little man is, you know, he's breached. He won't, you know, he turn his head, you know, down so, you know, he can come out vaginally and stuff. And my fiance is just like, I want to have him vaginally. I want to do this and I want to do that. And I'm just like, baby, look here, as long as he comes safe and sound, that's all that really matters to me. That's all that really matters to me. And, you know, he trying to, you know, uh, uh, listen to that constantly, you know, with, her dealing with all the emotions that she's going through and the things that I'm going through, but not also, you know, verbalizing them because I got to be strong for her and let her know, like, man, you, you okay. And yo, uh, you know, to, to release some stress and stuff. So like I said, July hit, man. And we had a, um, I, I don't, I don't want to call it a scare, but we had my man, my, my little man like to play tricks. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say that we had a, oops, you thought I was coming. So uh, <laughs> what was it? We we go to the doctor's appointment and uh, I get there a little right after her. My Metro access, like I said, man, my junk is bullshit and that's late. So I get there and she said, yo, uh, I'm cramping. And at this point, she about what, seven months at this time? About about seven months, about going on, going on eight, but about seven months or so. And she's like, yeah, I'm cramping. And come to find out, she dilated. I think, I can't remember, what was it? It was like three, three, three centimeters. I, I'm not even sure right now, man, because my mind was just going through the road. I was like, oh, man, my man coming. My man is coming. I'm super excited. I'm sweating. I don't know what to do. So they tell me I got to go sit and wait. And uh, we'll come back out with her. So we did at the hospital, man, and I'm going nuts, man. I'm calling my mother. I'm calling uh, uh, my fiance, mother. I'm calling my sisters. I'm like, yo, yeah, she's about to have the baby, man. He coming. He coming, man, for real. And uh, they're like, hold up, wait a minute. She didn't, you know, dilate anymore. So I'm like, oh, okay, this this little prankster right now. We got a little prankster on our hands. And uh, fast forward, what, a couple of weeks uh, later, and like you said, she getting big. And this was like, this was the, the weekend of the baby shower. Once again, shout out to April. We had the baby shower. And uh, 
boom, I guess that's what it did it. That that's what did it. He he ate real good and was like, yo, I'm trying to come out. So uh she had to go to the doctor's appointment to try to get him reached to try to turn him around because like I said, she wanted to really have him, you know, vaginally and stuff like that. And uh, the night of or the night before she was supposed to go to the uh doctors, man, come going upstairs, she's going upstairs and come to find out like she is like cramping really bad like she's going through it so we call the ambulance and get to the hospital and uh, man come to find out yo he's coming tonight we're gonna have him tonight so i'm like yo are we serious and it's like 10 o'clock at night and i'm like man metro x says you can't call same day trips none of that you can't do none of that you got called a day in advance before five o'clock and i'm like are you really fucking kidding me so now i gotta rely on the same day same day taxi so me and sis, we about to hop on the bus, and I'm like, shit, I ain't waiting. But the taxi joint, that's gonna take a little bit. You don't know, especially if it's not like rush hour time or like early in the day, or you taking it to like a certain uh, destination. They come. But nonetheless, they came like, what was it like an hour and a half later? They came, got there, sitting there, and it was like, yeah, she gonna have a baby tonight. And man, oh man, my man came at one, one thirty, one thirty. They, 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 they probably throw something at me. <laughs> I got the time right, but yeah, man, I'm sitting there. She's on the operation, uh, operating table, and she, you know, she's gonna have the C-section, and they got the little blue screen up, man. And I'm just like, wow, like, and obviously, of course, she, you know, can't feel nothing or anything like that. You know, she's drugged up, and she's just so calm, just so calm. And I'm like, really, bro? Like, I'm nervous. I'm. But man, I'm talking about man, my arms are shaking. I'm like, I I, I want to hear his his cry. I want to see him, and I'm just like, are you serious? This is literally about to happen. And she's just like, are you okay? And I just start crying. And then, boom. Um, I don't know how long I was in there, man. I I really don't remember how long I was in there. But once the doctors uh, said, oh, baby is out, and maybe five seconds, maybe not even five seconds later, he started crying. And man, I nailed it. I didn't even get to see him first. You know, I didn't even get to see him first. It's a real cool photo that my mother-in-law uh, took in me uh, with the whole, you know, uh, doctor gown on with the mask and stuff like that. And I was, I looked real cool, you know? <laughs> I looked real cool. But it, yo, man, I'm just like, wow, man, like, wow. And the reason why I say wow is because, you know, our story is just, is man i'm telling you bro like you hollywood write stuff sort of like this but it's like it's not every day that you can um find a, a couple who met in a, a elementary school um one was in the third one was in the second grade and i made her laugh and that was sort of it you know we went to junior high school and we went to high school which we really didn't talk and fast forward what maybe five years after that because i graduated in 09 she did it 08 so what five years or so four years for me we find each other 10 years later we have a baby like come on man like and not only that it was just you know so much you know uh so much things you know running through my mind i'm just like grateful i'm blessed and uh, you know we, we in a we're like we like man like this is dope and I get the all highest praise to God above, man, because I was like, yo, like I said, told myself before, I was like, I don't know if I could have a baby or not, but man, I'm a father and I know I can. And and the reason why I say that, because, you know, as some people know, you know, I have a disability and that played a, you know, a factor, you guys, in uh, all of this, all of this story um, that I'm going to get into, you guys. Uh, in just a bit. Yes, I'm going to get into in just a bit. Please stick around. Yes, man. CPS got involved in everything. I know, yes, you guys, you got like, what, man, for real? I'm going to really go into it, really give you guys uh, my uh, thoughts and opinions uh, on all that, man, for real. Just, you know, what's been going on. But yes, man, I'm a dad. I'm really, I'm, I'm surprised I ain't, he ain't crying right now. I gave him a bottle uh, <laughs> before the show. So, Yes, he's out there with his mama now. He's so he ain't out there by himself. I don't want to get no everybody get worried. Like, oh my God, where's baby at? <laughs> yeah, he will be making some appearances on the show when he get a little older, man. But yo, man, uh, like I said, that that that's been the most of it, man. Just 
trying to get myself mentally right. And I got the obituary slapped on my refrigerator. Weird place for me to put it at though, but I think about him every single day, man. Just every single day, just everything he taught me. And I always just be like, man, bro, like you were right, man. You were right about everything, bro. Just like you were right. You feel me? Like, and I just feel times and moments where it's just when I be alone, we be vibing out or talking or something like that. Like, you know, it's just it's real weird. You know, it's real weird. Isaac, man, I love you. You know, and I miss you, bro. And I thank you, man. I thank you for helping me find my purpose back in this, you know, stuff that I always wanted to do. You know, all it was is just giving me the laptop. You know, all it takes for uh, for to spark that dream or spark that motivation that maybe you lost in life or whatever like that. And all it takes is, you know, someone else to just, you know, help you out. And man. It was it was my brother, man, just giving me the laptop and saying, man, just go with it. You know what you want to do, man, just do it. And, yo, for real. And just on top of that, wanted him to see, you know, my son. And man, so it's just it's 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 funny how uh, life works. It, it really is. And to see my son here and every single time everyone see him and whether it was my mom, my sisters, man, he looked just like you. He looked just like you. And, I'm I'm just excited. I still can't believe it. Every day is just a blessing to just um, be 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 his dad, be his father, you know. And a couple of months or so, he growing so fast, man. I'm telling you, he's growing so fast. And uh, you know, I'm all new to this, and, and I, I hear when babies grow fast, they moving out the way and stuff like that. And I'm like, nah, me and baby we ain't having another one right now. We ain't having one, another one. And you got mama in law, she talking about, yeah, get your tubes tied and everything like that. Nah, that ain't happening. But we ain't, we ain't having a, uh, another one uh, right now. Um, and like I said, you know, I, I never thought I, I could, but now that God has blessed me, wolf one, I always would, you know, love another one. A girl would, would, would be awesome. You know, a girl would really uh, be awesome. But that I got my little man, I'm, I'm, I'm just joyful, man. I'm literally just joyful. And you guys probably can't see it's a bunch of his stuff all in the room. Pampers, uh, everything. Walk. I'm talking about everything, man. All his clothes. So you get the nine to ten months, man. I'm just, I'm looking at some of the family. I'm just like, man, you know. So uh, I'm taking it all in, man. I'm taking it all in. And he, he, he's a dramatic one. He's a dramatic one, especially when he uh, cry and go in. So. Oh uh, man, I'm I'm loving it. I'm definitely loving it. I, I couldn't wait to come back to podcasts. I felt like man, uh, I, I I I didn't. Even, I felt like that I really have it. That I still have it. Will people really still care? Will people still follow or, or like or subscribe or whatever like that? Like, can I still edit? You know? And I'm like, I start doing some things, and I'm like, man, yo, I think I think I got it. <laughs> I think I still got it, man. And and it's a, it's a gift. It's a gift from God, man. And I feel like. And everyone has a gift, man. They just gotta, you know, tap into it, man. So tap into it. But yo, you guys, man, like I said, uh, I'm gonna finish that story, give you guys the scoop and everything uh later on in the show. So please stick with me, you guys, for real. Don't move. Like I said, CBS got involved. I'm gonna get my old opinions on that because that shit was wild, man, for real. Yo, man, the 1130 podcast is back. Yes, you guys. Uh, before we get to my guest that's coming up in just a bit, you guys, a reminder, Commission Talks is back. We came back last week. My guys, Blackheart, Cyber Yeti, and uh, Warren Marlow. We was on Buzzing with Marlo. We talked, we chatted about the top 10 pro wrestlers. Yo, <laughs> pissed a couple of people off when I put CM Punk as number 10. <laughs> Uh, but we all know who number one is the travel chief, man. The bloodline, man, they, they are strong. They is definitely strong. Talk pro wrestling, you guys. The 1130 podcast, Talk Pro Wrestling, returns October 14th with commission talks, man, and some dope guests following that. It's going to be crazy. And also coming this fall, you guys, even though the fall is here, later on in the fall, beyond 1130, man, we talking parenting, relationships, we talking sex, uh, everything, man, for real, current events or whatever you want to talk about, we're going to get the grown folks talking, man, for real, grown folks are talking, yo, this is, this is, 
I, I miss this. I, I truly, truly miss this. I, I truly appreciate everyone tuning in and checking out the 1130 podcast. For real, tell a friend about the 1130 podcast, and we're going to keep it moving on here on the show. Like I said, the podcast is back, and I got a dope guest coming up. My guy, Jimmy IV from the Sexy Cool Lounge podcast will be joining me right after this, man. For real. Don't move. We got more coming up, you guys. Yo, and also, be, before we take this break, you guys, yo, I almost forgot, man. Yo, before we take a break, it's time, you guys. Yes, it's time for the WTF moment of the week, you guys. Yes, 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 yes. WTF moment of the week. I almost forgot the WTF moment. How could I forget it, man? <laughs> How could I forget it? I'm so excited uh, to chat with my guy, uh, Jimmy IV. Yo, WTF moment of the week. I ain't did this in a minute. Uh, yo, these challenges is getting crazy, man. Like, come on. Come on, and then I'll be seeing big stuff now. Now, follow me on TikTok, follow the 1130 podcast on TikTok. My fiance and my sister, they, they done got me on TikTok and stuff, so I'll be <laughs> just spending some time on TikTok and then seeing some wild stuff. But yo, the Night Quill challenge, though, like the really, though, WC. You're not gonna believe the latest warning the FDA has to issue. They're asking people not to cook chicken in Night Quill. It is the latest social media challenge. The FDA says not only is it unappetizing, it could also be very unsafe. Boiling the medication can make ingredients more concentrated and change its properties. Officials say vapors from the medication could hurt the lungs as well. It seems like, you know, what are you talking about? Point? This is crazy. I need but to do it, more research. What, what, what would be the point? But these are things that happen on social media. And then these <laughs> these challenges are issued and people are following it. And then you have to have entities like the FDA come out and say not to do this. But why? I don't quite get it. I don't know. Okay, right. I don't know. You're not doing it, in other words. Do not do this, okay? All right. Crazy, man. Crazy. People would do anything for likes, views, uh, uh, it's just crazy. It's so crazy what you see on the internet, man. For real, people really live on the internet. They got no life, man. No life. The Night Quill Chicken. Oh, man. It was already a shortage of some chicken, though. But you, you Night Quill. All right, all right, we're gonna move on, you guys. Coming up next, man, for real, my guy Jimmy IV from the Sexy Cool Lounge podcast is coming up. You don't wanna miss it, man. We back, man. I'm back. Let's get it, man. For real, don't move. Yo, we back here on the 1130 podcast. Appreciate everyone sticking with me throughout the break, man. For real, it's been a dope show. Uh, I got more story time coming up later on in the show. But right now, like I promised you all, 
a dope, amazing guest that's blessed the 1130 podcast before, and I thought I'd bring him back, man. First first episode back, my guy, Jimmy IV, he's the creator, entrepreneur, and host of the Sexy Cool Lounge podcast. What's going on, Jimmy, man? How's it going? Hey, bro, everything is good. Everything is good, man. Uh, before we even get started vibing, man, let me just uh, congratulate you, man, on being a dad and, and bringing another vibe into this universe man you know congratulations and all the best and all the success to you in your personal life man you you're you're doing amazing things with your venture with sharing your voice with the world but now you have a higher calling to be that role model and be that beacon for another entity that you brought into this world man so I wish you nothing but the best with that, man. Congratulations once again to you and your family. And uh, you. I, I look for nothing but bigger and better things for you now as a dad. How about that? Hey, man, I like that. I definitely like that. And I appreciate them kind words, man. For real. Uh, man, you, you was you was many of uh, the guests uh, that I ran through my mind uh, during the break. Because, you know, I'm just... And so much time on my hand, but it's also so much anxiety because I'm worrying about uh, me being a dad and, you know, my son's about to be born and, and so many things. And you touched on something uh, when I was listening to your podcast and just just live in the moment, just just live in the moment, you know, and I was getting so caught up in the future, you know, so getting caught up on, you know, when I'm coming back and, you know, uh, 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 the idea of your son and you know, uh, me, me, me having, you know, a disability and, you know, doing things and, you know, just so caught up and just not just living in the moment and stuff like that. And I thought that was really dope. And, you know, bringing you back first episode back to, you know, spread some dope vibes, man. Uh, I appreciate that, man. And thank you for bringing me back as your first guest, bro. I mean, that, that means a lot to me that you uh, thought of me enough to even bring back as a guest, but like on that level, for first guests, you know, once you're back on the scene, man. So thank you, man. Thank you for that. And, 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 you know, sexy, cool lounge vibe and the nation. Thanks you for that, man. Um, living in the moment, right. Was yeah. something that kind of came to me, um, through some experiences that I had. Right. And I thought it would be good to, put it in an episode rather than kind of just explain it um, in the environment that I was when I had that enlightenment, you know what I'm saying? So I felt like I just needed to kind of put that into an episode and share it um, with the world. And, and I'm glad that it, it resonated with you, brother, because uh, I think for so, so many of us around the world, uh, we get caught up in the day-to-day grind of our lives right and we're always trying to plan for tomorrow and next week and so on and so forth and and there's a part of life where you should do that i mean we should know where we're going and, and how we want to try to get there but i think the balance is kind of off kilter a little bit sometimes so i felt like i needed to speak on it in such a way that just to remind people man like you know we're not promised tomorrow do we want to set ourselves up for tomorrow? Yeah. You know, I mean, if you want to have a better job, then you got to you got to learn things. And you if you want to be a better athlete, then you have to continue to train and so on and so on. But let's not forget to truly appreciate and smell the roses of today and not so focused on planting the roses that we want to see tomorrow and next week and five years down the road, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it do. It do. Like you said, we we, we don't uh, take a moment and just realize that, yo, this moment and this time right now is is a blessing. And we always, like you said, look forward to us tomorrow. And tomorrow is not promised, though. So live in the now. And like you said, the power of now is realizing, you know, living in the now. So absolutely, I, I, I dig that. I dig that quote right there. The, the best moment you have is the one that you have right now. It's not the one that you had yesterday and it's not the one that you will have tomorrow because you don't have tomorrow, but you have right now. 
You know what I mean? You have the ability to change your frequency, man. You know what I'm saying? If you pissed about something, you have that ability to say, wait a minute, mm, let me, let me recheck this for a minute. You know, is this, is this really worth my energy? Like right now that I'm, that I'm wasting on this or, you know, if I'm happy, be happy in the moment, it, you know, just, just let that like soak in, in the moment and not try to like already be off into what's happening tomorrow. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense. And, and being a dad right now, it it, it forces you to so, more, more so to live in the moment. You know, oh, wow, you don't yeah. really, you don't really got so much time to you know look uh, in the future or definitely look behind you. And what you shouldn't be looking behind you, like you said, everything is is right in front of you. So I, I, I definitely dig that. I definitely how I've been treating you since you know everything since last time I had you on. Ah, uh, man, everything has been good, man. I I have no complaints. Um, somebody asked me one time, they're like, you know, are you always happy? Like always happy. <laughs> and listen, I'm human just like everybody else's brother. I put my pants on the same way as everybody else. I have, sometimes I have a good day, you know, and sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge day. That's just, a, that's just the way of life. Right. But to be honest with you, Matt, I'm happy every day. Every day that I wake up is a happy day. All right. Um, I've got a podcast that is in 55 countries, brother, 520 cities around the world. Yeah. I have nothing in this world to be unhappy about. You know what I'm saying? I have an opportunity to speak my voice to people around the world. And as of this week, um, the next episode drops on, on Friday, I'll have 70 episodes out. For me, that's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? But Living in the moment is what it's all about, bro. So for me, I'm happy every day. Every day I'm happy because I try to always find the power of the positivity in something rather than focusing in on the negative, which sometimes we have the propensity to do. We're human, and I, and I totally get that. But every now and then, we need that reminder to say, Hey, instead of focusing on what might be the failure of this, let's focus in on what could be the positive outcome of it. If that makes yeah. any sense, brother. Yeah, it do. It do, man. That positive, positive uh, mindset and that positive energy can go can go a long way. Even when I was, you know, on the break and I was, you know, saying it a little bit earlier, like I felt like, man, would, would anybody really, you know, want to tune back in? Would anybody, you know, want to subscribe? Do I still have it? You know, and Man, it took a lot of you know me listening to you know a lot of different people, po a lot of different people podcasts and stuff to uh, sort of get back motivated and just also knowing that who I am and stuff. So, uh, what, what type of uh, advice you have for uh, those who feel like you know maybe they just need to get uh, a little spark on them, you know? I, they feel I was, lost. It, it, my my first advice to anyone that feels like they need a spark or they're just not sure about what they want or, or where they want to go is first, like believe in yourself, right? That's the first thing. Like, like nothing happens until you make that choice to believe in yourself. Once you believe in yourself, then whatever direction or what, whatever um, point you want to go to will happen from there. So first thing is believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then we need we 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 collectively need to have a conversation because everyone should believe in themselves. Okay, yeah. everyone. Sometimes our environment, sometimes certain people, uh, try to influence us in in a different way. But at the end of the day, if you want to be successful, if you want to be in a different place than where you are, it first and foremost starts, brother, with believing in yourself and loving yourself. OK, you know, we can love everybody else, but we also have to take a minute to love ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And once yeah. we combine those two together, then you start to have some motivation. You know, I just did an episode about your motivation versus your determination. Right. Motivation gets you started. But determination is what gets you across the finish line. You're determined to see this through. Right. But it yeah. starts with believing in yourself first brother so anybody that that is feeling like they're lost or feeling like 
um, they're not sure about what's happening or, or where they're going or whatever my first thing is you gotta you gotta find a way to believe in yourself and love yourself absolutely yeah most definitely most definitely definitely gotta believe in yourself definitely love yourself man and um those things you know necessarily i wasn't you know dealing with i definitely love myself definitely believe in myself i think it was maybe a little self-doubt you know and self-doubt being, about what just be, probably being away being away from the podcast and just um Bro, the, only, the, the only the only reason you were away was because you were bringing a new life into this universe man and you know when i first met you you were hot you understand what yeah. i'm saying like 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 i vibed with you on a whole different frequency so i started to follow you bro and that doesn't change just because you had to take a minute for personal life right like your yeah. vibe and the people who vibe with you on the 11 30 podcast that's like authentic bro that's not fake that's not manufactured you know what i'm saying all you did was just take a break you 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 weren't retiring for five years and then coming back yeah you know what i'm saying all you were yeah. doing was just like hey i need to just like step for a minute because i got something bigger that i need to attend to and those who love you understand that bro i mean those who have kids and those who don't man god love you for bringing a new life into this world and being a father man and and, and having that whole set of responsibilities and accountabilities and things of that nature because now you're growing on a whole nother level beyond the podcast and if people are real with you they want to see you shine on a whole different level in fatherhood brother you know what i'm saying and then they and then come back to the podcast and talk to us about that talk to us about what it is about you being a father because now you can relate to so many other people who follow you and support you in a whole different perspective than you did prior to being a dad right yeah you're right you're right you're, you're so right about that man so, right so now about you got that. So now it's, it's almost like you just took a break to get some more ammunition to come back to the podcast and now have other stories to tell and share, <laughs> and share with the world brother yes 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 it's, it's it's a whole lot of story time uh episodes lined up over the next coming weeks man for real no doubt. I'm, I'm sure i'm sure we're all you know <laughs> waiting with bated breath on hearing the the, the 3 30 a.m getting up and and having to change diapers or feed or whatever oh, it is that you got to do brother oh, I, I'm, I'm i'm gonna be listening for those oh man that that has been a, an experience uh itself you know and just changing diapers and putting it on wrong uh -huh. the first time or upside down and i'm just like okay i gotta get used to it and waking up at three o'clock in the morning that that was sort of an adjustment too because i'm a I'm sort of a late night guy, you know. I'm 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 up pretty, you know, early and not really sleeping late, but you know, that time right now, right, 3 30, yeah, I just been to bed maybe about three, four hours or so. So I'm like in the middle of it. So he's just going, yeah, I'm like, oh shucks, okay. Gotta get gotta get used to it, gotta adjust. Right. And you know, he's two months now, so I'm definitely adjusting to it and everything, the whole crown and everything. So it's 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 amazing. Like I was just saying, the the feeling of you know changing the diaper or just making a bottle or just you know sitting oh, there wow. just playing with them it's just it's a happy feeling you know i never thought you know I, you know i i wasn't never the one that sit around and be like yo man i want you know kids you know stuff like that maybe it had something to do with my situation not really sure but you know that's that's how i felt and i felt like um like i was saying earlier how uh that how the person that i had you know my son with my fiance with yeah. that we always go back to 1999 from elementary school like you don't you know you don't really hear stuff like that so i just say that's that's nothing but god you know and an amazing feeling and indescribable like i was saying when uh the doctor said he was out in three seconds probably not even five and he started crying i just i melted you know, I just started busting out crying. Man, and she's just sitting there on the table, you know, obviously, you know, with, you know, some drugs, you know, to keep her calm and, you know, <laughs> not feel no pain or whatever, but she is just so calm. And I'm like, 
Ooh, I should, I should, you know, I should be acting like you, you know, but no, you're, you're common in me. And I'm like, wow. But yeah, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing feeling. I bet it it's is. Bro. And, and just, just think of it like this, man. Like, like you have a whole new journey now, a whole new journey, brother. Like, you know, your podcast was, was, was on straight and narrow that was on cruise control it's popping it's hot you're in your rhythm right you can do this you know almost blindfolded right now you gotta take the blinders off and you gotta start from scratch like all over again like mm-hmm. you know you know what i'm saying like you know how it was when you first started the podcast right i know how it was when i first started mine and anybody else that's listening when you first started, when you got that first job or you took that first audition, whatever it may be, right? Now, brother, you got to start from scratch. And, you know, you 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 awake on this ride. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and, yeah. and sometimes you it, it's going to be challenging, but, but you know, you're going to succeed with it because you're learning as you go, but you're also growing, man. And, man, I mean, look, you got a family. Like, bro, you got a family, not just a fiance, but now you have a family. Now you're a dad and a podcaster. Yeah. Like now mm-hmm. you thought you were wearing multiple hats. <laughs> now, now you really wear multiple hats. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, that's that to think of it, you know, like that, in, which it is like that. And to hear it, you know, come from someone else and from someone else in the podcast world is, you know, is. Is 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 unbelievable and still hard to believe, also too. But I love it, man. I definitely love it. Uh, but you guys, man, we're having fun here, vibing here on the eleven thirty podcast. Uh, we're gonna move on here on the show. A new segment. Um, I'm bringing here on the podcast each and every week. Um, we deliver some inspirational quotes, and this one right here is the inspirational quote of the week, you guys. Yes, it comes from Alexander the Great. Uh, there is nothing impossible to to they who will try. Let me repeat that again. Uh, There's nothing impossible to do today who will try. Man, if you out there, you trying, hey, look at anything's possible. I remember a buddy of mine one time. I don't know if he was being funny, but hey, he probably wasn't though. But I remember because I always would have a, a saying that the impossible is possible. You know, and he would be like, nah, no, it ain't possible. That's why it's, you know, called the impossible. You know, and my life, it was always uh, obstacles or the impossible sort of in front of me that I made it possible. You know, so as long as you try, it don't matter uh, what situation you're in, who you are, what ethnic background, whatever you believe in, as long as you get up every day and as long as you try and Put both foot, foot, put both feet forward, or both wheels, or whatever, whatever you use to get around. That's all that matters, though. That 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 that's really all that matters. Well, it, it, here's my take on impossible versus possible, right? For every situation in life, there's always been that one person that broke the rule of impossible, right? Take and just just hear me out on this, right? So before before someone ran the fastest mile, everybody said it was impossible to run the mile, whatever it is, right? Until someone broke broke that rule, right? Yeah. Let's just take sports, championships, whether it's football, basketball, right? Oh, it's impossible to get six. It's impossible to get 11, you know, shout out, you know, Boston Celtics and, you know, it, all of that, you know, it's impossible to do a three-peat until it's done. And then everybody doesn't think it's impossible anymore. So what am I trying to say with all of this? What I'm trying to say is never, never doubt yourself with the impossible, right? Right. Stick with the possible. Stick with the belief in yourself. Whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to run the fastest mile, then you keep training to run the fastest mile. Okay? Whatever it may be, do not let 
the impossible, you know, bring you down. I mean, and that, that goes across everything, whether it's the first African-American president, whether it's anything in sports, you know, um, medicine. I mean, just the only way that you will fail is if you give in to the confines of impossible means it will never, ever be done. Well, if that's the case, then all of the things that have happened beyond that would have never happened brother right about that man so right about that i dig it i definitely uh dig it uh but you guys man you're gonna keep it uh moving on uh here on the podcast uh jimmy man you took a a dope trip man you know like you said you've been following me i definitely followed you you took a trip man to the uk and i think i was watching the whole moments because i think the uk is is one of the uh, cities and, and towns that I would love to go to, or countries and stuff. So, I was, how was it? Let me tell you, brother. Uh, being in the United Kingdom um, was an amazing experience. Uh, the people there are so welcoming and loving. Um, I feel like I have family over there now, and I, and I say that from the bottom of my heart. I mean, you know, I didn't, I, I knew some people before i went over uh just through social media and some people that were following me you know via the podcast and stuff like that but to actually go over there and meet people and go through london and a couple other places man it was beautiful man the culture over there is similar to ours but it's different but i tell anybody if you have an opportunity you need to go Go for the cultural experience, man. Go for the food. Go for just the ambiance of just being somewhere truly different. Um, The currency is different, okay? So over there, uh, money is called a pound. Here, you know, we, we call it, you know, dollars. But over there, it's, you know, a pound. So it's just the whole culture is is amazing over there man if you if you have the opportunity to go to the uk i i'm the first person to say go absolutely go hey, hey that's what's up that's what's up I, and definitely for the you know the experience and everything and I always vouch how i'm a always uh been a big wrestling fan and when they always go to the uk's the show seems always the shows always seem much funner than the ones over in on the states on the state side <laughs> so i was like yo man they they really get down over in the uk so definitely a trip that i got a vibe to man for real uh i i love their little uh back and forth where uh they call it soccer they football uh uh-huh. so, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 that's cool yeah. Uh, speaking they're, of speaking, they're really oh, they're, they're really big in to that over there, man. I mean, like, like we are passionate about uh, the NFL and college football mm-hmm. here, um, yeah. specifically uh, NFL football. They are just as passionate over there, man. Like, I remember um, going into a pub uh, after one of their games, and just all of these people came in and the whole pub i'm talking upstairs and downstairs of this pub started chanting like whatever the fight song was mm-hmm. from and it was a beautiful <laughs> thing for me to watch because i mean you know we kind of get into our passions for football here right but everybody knew that song and they sung it in such a harmonic way that it was just like it was really cool to see the whole pub singing this song the fight song for uh this team man um i videotaped it but i don't know if i put it on social media or not but i'll share it with you um in an i am okay. just so you can get an idea of what i'm talking about hey that's what's up that's definitely that's definitely cool man uh speaking of football yeah. um how you feel about the season going on so far with the uh, <laughs> washington commanders and stuff the uh, ravens took a a horrible loss the, uh, last week i don't forget who they took on uh but man it was it was embarrassing though but yeah uh how you what you, what you think well, about what's going uh, on now okay well uh for those that don't know i am a diehard 
uh, HTTR fan. <laughs> um, and I will continue to be a Washington Commanders fan. Uh, I am 55. So I have 55 years invested in this Washington team. So, you know, whatever the name is, doesn't matter to me. You know, I, I, I live in, in, in bleed the team more so than the name. So let's start there. Um, this season, it's going to be a challenge, man. This season is going to be a challenge. Um, I'm not really a big fan of Carson Wentz. Um, I think he holds the ball way too long. Um, so that creates a lot of uh, challenges. You know, we don't have the best offensive line. So as a quarterback, I would think that he needs to, to have a, a quicker release because the pocket pressure is just coming down on him. I mean, that game Sunday mm -hmm. where the Eagles came in and they just, yeah. you know, pretty much did what they wanted to do. And and the the sad part about that game was they really did not rush. They came mm -hmm. with just four on the off to, to our offensive line and still got to the quarterback. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So um I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of him, but, you know, I guess we got to ride with him because, um, he, you know, he does have a $28 million contract this year. So barring any injuries, he's the guy we got to run with. And, and we'll just have to hope and pray that, uh, you know, things get better. And this is not a trend um, going down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're gonna see. We're gonna see how how it goes and if things get better. Carson right. Wentz that wasn't his uh, best game. I think that was uh, the most times he's been sacked in his career. So I was. Uh, like, yeah, you know, it, the crazy thing is, is that you know we as as the HTTR back in the day had the most sacks on him when he came from Philly mm -hmm. to play us here, and we sacked him eight times. Mm -hmm. Now he's our quarterback in the same team that we sacked him on has now returned the favor. So yeah, um, it wasn't a good day, um, but hopefully we can bounce back. Uh, we got a challenge coming up, coming up. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it all works out, man. And if we can turn this around. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, one last thing I want to give you an yeah. opinion on, if you uh, heard about the whole situation uh, with the Boston hits, Boston hit coach and uh, the actress uh, Nia Long. And everyone, you know, big fan of Nia Long and the Boston head coach uh, was, I don't know if he was caught, but the news came out that he cheated on Nia Long with a, um, uh, someone who, you know, plays for the, not, she don't play for the team, but she worked on a team like a, right. a trainer or whatever the case may be. And right. he's been suspended for the entire uh, basketball season now. Um, do you think that was uh, rightfully obviously is no fraternizing with you know other employees or whatever? Do you think that it was a fair uh judgment to give him you know the whole full season uh suspended, you know, or is just because he cheated on it was me alone, you know, that he cheated on? Uh, I'll give you my personal opinion, okay? okay? Cool. So, my personal opinion is that when you work for an organization, all right, and whether it's sports or whatever, when you work for an organization and you are in a position of leadership, head coach, CEO, whatever it is, you set the standards. You mm -hmm. set the standards. Whether you like it or not, you accepted the job. You understand the rules that go along with the job. You set the standards for everybody else that is underneath you. And you know that. So if you made the choice to go against those standards, then you suffer whatever consequence comes from someone who is above you. If one year is what they felt like was appropriate, then it is what it is, bro. I mean, you knew what you were doing and you knew what you were doing wasn't right. And how does that then set the tone for everybody else underneath you, if you aren't severely disciplined in the manner that the corporation or you know whoever's cutting your check deems you know fit. So if he got a one year suspension, then he got a one year suspension. I mean, he knew what he was doing, he knew he shouldn't be doing it, 
And if there's not any type of repercussions from it, then what's to say players or assistant coaches or anybody else can say, well, if, if, if the head coach can do this, then I can do it. Cause if not, then it's a double standard. And then you, to me, in my opinion, you go down a whole different rabbit hole at that point. So maybe the corporation felt like we're going to nip this in the bud. We're going to make a statement and we're going to let everybody know that when we say this is not what you do, this is not what you do, or mm -hmm. you're going to suffer the consequences. And I, I, I think, and then I, I don't want to like, you know, get ahead of the card here, but there may be something else, you know, going on after his one year suspension. Um, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You, you, yeah. You mean it like losing his job or, or, or so I, to say, uh, you know, I, I've just heard. Some, that's the only thing that I can think uh, yeah, of. Though, I, you know? I've, I've heard that, that this might not be like the only thing that happens, but this was the immediate appropriate in their eyes. Um, decision that needed to be made like right now yeah. you know what i'm saying I, yeah i feel like after this this is this, this head coach career is probably you know it's going to sort of go, go down there and i'm not you know wishing any bad on the man right but i just right. feel as though you know with all the attention that comes with that you know i don't think any organization uh is going to want him yeah um, he, he he i mean you know if if it ends up being that 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 they remove him permanently um, you know, he might get another opportunity. I mean, this, you know, this, this world yeah. that we live in, especially sports is all about second chances. Right. Yeah, right. Um, but to your first question, which was, you know, what was my opinion about it? I think that if they felt like a year suspension from the team, um, was the most important thing then, and maybe we don't know all of what went on in that, um, decision-making process. I mean, we know what what is being told in the public, but we don't know if there were other things that have not been told to the public that also was part of the decision-making process as well. So in my mind, it's like, you know, there's certain lines that I think when you're in leadership, bro, that you just should not cross. You just shouldn't even go down that road because mm -hmm. it, it can never end up well for you in leadership. You know yeah. what I mean? You're the leader of that basketball team. You're part of the face of that franchise. And if that's not part of the rules and regulations and policies, you know, let alone, and, and he's married, right? Yeah, I believe, yeah, he was yeah, married. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so, there, so, so there's a whole nother rabbit oh. hole situation in itself, right? Oh, yeah, it, it's something to that effect, but I believe him and Nia Long was, was, was dating, I believe. They, they were a couple. Mm -hmm. If I'm getting that right, yeah, they, they right. were a couple, and he cheated on me along with the woman, you know, who works for the uh, Boston yeah. Celtics organization. Yeah. Well, wh whether he's married or not, if if part of policy was that as a head coach and or assistant coach or players that you're not to partake yeah. in a, in socializing with either cheerleaders or members of the the corporate staff or whatever it might be then that's not what you do. Yeah. Then that's right. not what you do, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, and if you get caught, then you suffer the consequences, brother. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're so right. You're so right about that, man. No cheating, man. But who cheats on me alone, though? Who, who cheats on me alone? I think that was the main subject. Like, man, you got to be the dumbest, though. But, <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to move on, you guys, on the podcast. Uh, it's time, you guys, for the 1130 podcast. Uh, hot seat, you guys. Okay. All right. All right. Jimmy, it's time for the hot seat. It's the first episode back here on the podcast to close out the show. Um, instead of me asking a few questions, though, we're going to turn it around. And if you have any questions you want to ask me, put me in the hot seat. My fiance was like, well, you should be in the hot seat. So, all right. I'm in the hot seat now. So, floor's all yours, Jim. How's it feel to be a dad? It feels... Uh, uh, Honestly, honestly, it feels amazing. It, it feels amazing. Uh, last weekend, I told uh, my mom 
and my sisters, everyone to come over and just to look. And my sister also pregnant at the same time, my fiance. So they had them like maybe like a week apart. So the picture that I got with my mom holding my son on one arm and holding my sister's son on the other arm was just like, that was priceless. You know, it was a priceless picture, but just seeing my mom, you know, face and she always, you know, asked, you know, you having a baby, you having a baby. And I was like, I don't know, mom, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, whenever the time, you know, happens, it happens. And, you know, when she see him and just like, oh man, he was just like you, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And I think I probably feel some type of way right now, just waiting a couple of months where he just, you know, start saying dad, dad, or, you know, just, you know, like you thought, oh, I can take them to wrestling night. You thought, you thought <laughs> now was it. I'm going to be through the roof, you know, like, so it's, it's an amazing, amazing feeling. Amazing right. feeling. N next question for you, all right? What is the one most important thing that you want to teach your kid growing up? Hmm. Ah, the number one thing you know, I want if, if you only had one, okay, okay, as he as he grows up, okay, this is like this is this is from dad to son. What would that be? I just uh, number one thing. I, you know, the number one thing that's coming to my mind right now, but I'm pretty sure after this show. <laughs> I'm going to come up with so many things, but I, I probably want to say uh, respect, you know, uh, you know, learn how to, you know, respect women. But, I, I, you know, that's the first thing that's coming to my mind right now. And it, But it's, it's, it's so many things, you know, just um, learn how to, you know, uh, teach them how to, you know, work and be responsible. And, um, oh, man, it's just so many. Yeah, you what, I, how, how about we do this? So. You're gonna probably come up with some other things after the show, right? So how about how about if we as the listeners look forward to additional things that you want to share with your son as as you grow as he grows up from father to son? Not worldly okay. things, but like this is what I want to hand down to you. This is what I expect of you. This is what I want to share with you from so when I'm not here anymore you will remember me this way as your father right so how about we do this how about in the comment section right you maybe give us a little a little bit of a bullet point maybe five six different things that here are the things that i want to share with my son throughout his growing up and i want him to learn from me as a dad how about that Okay, I'm down with and that. And then that way we can go into the comment section and we can actually look at it later, right? Okay, cool. cool. Good enough? Yes, good that is so good enough. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Another question? Last, yeah, last question, brother. Now that you're back on the scene, 1130 podcast, hotter than ever, out the gate, where do you see yourself a year from now, brother? With the podcast. Well, I see myself a year from now with the podcast is really gaining um, some big attention, some a big attraction with the podcast. I feel myself uh, moving outside of D.C. and also uh, traveling and meeting uh, people uh, like yourself that I've done multiple episodes with because I always I, I got a, uh, a plan that I want to do some episodes with people uh, in person that I connected with and died with really really dope so um i get asked that question a lot i ask myself that question a lot also and i i definitely see myself really uh taking a podcast in a different you know different direction and trying to you know uh show off uh what what i'm what i can do you know try to you know be a a host you know so that's that's really really what i want to you know take the podcast and do you know from a year from now or so you know, a good deal because the reason the reason I'm asking that is because you know we 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 stay in touch you know on a regular <laughs> whether it's uh through it through a DM I am or or what have you but we but we stay we stay you know you know in in touch with each other so instead of me saying five years from now or three years from now I said a year which is only twelve months right so 
I want to have this conversation again 12 months from now. And I, I, I expect, and I'm, and since you're in the hot seat, we're going we gonna to make sure you feel the hot seat. That there's an accountability, not only to me, but to your listeners and to your fans, the loyalty of, of the, the loyal fans, right? Mm -hmm. That a year from now, that you're in a bigger and better place than where you are today, right? And only you can decide what that bigger and better place is. But I want to have this conversation with you again 12 months from now. And I want to I want to I want to receive the energy from you about where you are which should be in a totally different place than the conversation that we're having today, brother. So now okay. there's a little bit of accountability on you in the hot seat for yeah. the next 12 months to take the fire of the podcast and make it bigger I, and better, brother. I like the challenge. And, and everybody you know, I, on I, YouTube I, is now watching. <laughs> I like it. I'm definitely up for it. I'm definitely up for it. For real, man. Jimmy, I, be, I appreciate you so, so much, man, for coming through here on the 1130 Podcast. First episode back. Thank you for taking the invite, man. It's so, so awesome. Before you go, uh, tell everyone uh, where they can catch the Sexy Cool Lounge Podcast when new episodes coming back. And uh, once again, if you have any uh, questions or shout outs, anything you'd like to say? Hey, I just want to thank you for the opportunity um, to be your first guest back, brother. It's been amazing. You, you're you an amazing host, okay? So let's just start there, brother. You're an amazing host. Don't ever forget that. Believe in yourself. Love yourself, brother. Um, as far as Sexy Cool Lounge Podcast, you can catch it out at any one of your uh, favorite popular podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Tune in iHeartRadio, Amazon, uh, you name it, we're there. You can also uh, go to the website, which is www.sexycoollounge.com. Uh, you can check out the uh, episodes there as well. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Sexy Cool Lounge. Give us a follow. We'll definitely follow you back. And uh, stay positive and uh, Keep putting positive energy and good vibes only into the universe, family, because that's what we do. Hey, man, that's what's up. That is what's up. That's definitely uh, what we're going to keep doing over here on the 1130 Podcast side, man. And definitely everyone who's watching and listening, man, for real. Jimmy IV, thank you so, so much. Everyone, subscribe, listen, and tell a friend about the Sexy Cool Lounge Podcast, for real. It's definitely a vibe there, man, for real. Once again, Jimmy, thank you so much for coming through here on the show. I definitely will be hitting you back up in 12 months to uh, <laughs> let you know what's going on and everything. So, And also, everything, man. Appreciate everything. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Much love to you, brother. I'm proud of you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, Jimmy I V, appreciate you coming through here on the 1130 Podcast. First episode back, man. I thank you for taking the invite, coming on the show. It was sweet, man. Really, really sweet. Uh, just to, you know, uh, catch up with you and, and chop it up. Definitely, you know, just being a dad and, you know, what it means about being a dad. I'm, man, I'm just, I, I'm happy. Right after this, right after get done with this, man, I'm going in, in there with him and, just, just everything, man. So more, more on that, you guys, over the coming weeks, you guys, are the stories. Uh, but also, you guys, check out the Sexy Cool Lounge podcast. Check it out. Go subscribe. Dig it. Also, man, for real, who teats on me alone? Like, come on, though. Like, <laughs> we're going to move on here on the 1130 podcast. Before we get on out of here, I just got to say to all, to all my uh, black people out there, man, to all, like all my black men, just my black people out there, yo. And I was having a, a conversation, and actually, I was sitting back just listening to my cousin. You know, just got out of uh, jail. He was in jail for like ten years or whatever, man. And just he got so much knowledge and game that he wanted to speak. And I'm just like, yo, man, I gotta get you on the show, man. But when he said it stuck out, man, because there's so much uh, violence that's going around, man. Wherever you live at, man, whether it's DC. Philly, New York, Chicago, wherever. Like, it's just so much craziness going on. And it's just not not, not even just black people. But why is so many people, man, just eager to die, man? Like, it's like you don't have nothing to, to live for, man. It's like life is so precious. Life is so beautiful, man. It's just like, come on, man. It, it, it's sad that when every day and everywhere you turn, there's something, you know, crazy going on, man. So 
come on, we all got to do better, man. We all got to do better. Whatever background, but specifically the black race, man, we got to do better, man. We can't be so eager to die, man. We got to be eager for success, eager to get home to our kids. And we know as the black man, you know, as, as, as being black, you know, we don't, is you might not make it in the house. You just might not make it in the house, just being black, you know? So, like, come on, man. We, we got to do better. Pick up, pick up something that you love, man. It, it's something. It's something. That's why I was telling my cousin, man. It, it's something that you love, whatever it is. You know, rolling in jail, just smoking. That's cool. It might be something you love, but what is something that you love, man, that you could do? And he was like, cook it, man. Come on, do that. Do it. You can make them play. I know you. Come on. You got to believe in yourself. Just like my man, Jimmy IV, that all stars will believe in yourself. Sometimes we need that little spark in us to just remind us now who the fuck we are. And like I was saying early in the show, my brother, uh, Isaac, man, just showed me who the fuck I was, man. For real. But you guys, uh, man, for real, man. Come on. We got to do better, though. We got to do better. But you guys, before I hit on out of here, yo, the CP, the, the whole story, man, with the whole CPS, man. Yo, the day, uh, what was it? It was, um, now, I said we had him on a Friday. He had on a Friday, one time in the morning. I'm, I'm I'm there the whole day, and I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to leave. I need to get fresh. So I leave the Saturday, and I'm going to go get fresh. I'm like, all right, bet. Going back up there later on at night. Can't wait to see my man. Yeah, you know, be there for bae. Uh, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. And I remember because SummerSlam came on that night. I was watching SummerSlam. And, boy, I woke up that morning. And because they was like, uh, April, April, uh, her sister, and went up there. You know, shout out to sis. She went up there and stayed. So I was just like, all right, I'm not going back. And I'm just, um, I'm chilling. And I get up. The next morning, I'm like, all right, bet I'm about to go back. But I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. My stomach ain't right at all, man. No, it ain't right. So I don't get the opportunity to go back that night. So come to find out, man, bam. Monday, we get a call. CPS, I'm like, what, what is going on? Yes, man. It was called because they don't seem fit that two people in a wheelchair could, 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 could take care of, of a baby. And I was like, what? That that I, I I don't think that's really that's all of it. And then she was like, okay, well, well, if someone was in the room, they wasn't helping her and, and blase blase. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? Like if if I'm in a hospital bed and it don't matter whoever next to me, my brother, my sister, my fiance, my son, but that nurse comes in there, she works, she clocks in and out. This is your job. Do your fucking job. No, nobody gotta sit over top of you and yo uh, ask you to do your job. No, do your fucking job. And and it's because it's at the we 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 uh, we night you know at the night hours at night between what twelve and or seven at night to seven in the morning where it's not that busy. So when the times uh it, it's sort of break time or you know it's rest time, you want to rest a little bit too much. Like come on, no. Do the fucking job, man. If somebody push the button, bro, do what you do what they ask you to do. You feel me? Like, I feel like that whole situation was blown out of proportion. I feel like the the the, the person assumed instead of asking, instead of being like, you know, uh, yeah, you know, like you could have came to me and was like, you know, uh, how do it feel to be a parent with a disability and stuff like that, which is numerous of topics that I am going to get over to in a couple of weeks, man, for real. Uh, my fiance was like, I don't think you should lay everything out on, on the first episode. Just like, let it keep building up. And I'm, I'm definitely him though. But you know, just uh, life, you know, being a parent with a disability and just everything, man. I felt like, uh, and even when I was there and one of the doctors just kept looking at me like, do he have him? You know, like, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, have me my son and let me hold my son. Like, you you can back up. Like, we, we got this. Like, I don't want to be, you know, looked at or stand over top of because of the situation or, or not even the situation or, you know, the, because I have a disability or something like that. Like, come on, man. You wouldn't stand over to somebody else. You know who was who was normal? Like, come on, come on, man, come on. At least get a person, you know, a chance and stuff like that. Don't just be, you know, 
just because you think you know it or just because you older like come on give somebody a chance man like all right man this has been a dope show I, I, story time is is definitely on every week you guys so man oh man my son is calling me so i gotta get back to him and i got to hit on out of here man for real it's not goodbye it's definitely see you later until next week for real the 11 30 podcast is back i'm excited with it man for real as you can see the, the podcast is back make sure you tell a friend about the 11 30 podcast but before I go, you know what time it is. Don't forget to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. Follow me on Twitter at the 1130 Podcast, uh, which I need to get on Twitter more. Uh, follow me on Instagram at the 1130 Podcast underscore like the 1130 Podcast on Facebook. And also follow the 1130 Podcast on TikTok. Yes, I'm on TikTok. I'm trying to make some video. I'm getting the hang of it, man, for real. I just got an Apple phone. Uh, 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 crazy debate over people with Androids. And, I, I, you know, I just because I came from the Android family now, I can't sit over here with the Apple family and just laugh at the Android family now. Like, everybody used to be like, bro, your camera's some shit, bro. I know, man. <laughs> I know. Now that I'm back podcasting, I had to get a lot of upgrades shit. But, yo, it, it's, it's going to be a vibe. It's definitely going to be dope. But, yes, follow me on TikTok, you guys. Definitely at the 1130 Podcast, man, for real. And also, the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro really returns October 14th with the commission. Yes, commission talks. We're going to be chopping it up. Warm our low, Sabi Yeti, and Blackheart. So that's definitely going to be a vibe. And speaking of my guys, off the Top Rose podcast, tune in to them, man, for real. Fridays, 11 15 p.m. And Warm our low, Fridays, 5 p.m. Eastern. Tap in with them. And also Wednesdays, you guys, today, 5 p.m. We'll be back with Commission Talks. We're going to be on Off the Top Roads podcast. So that's going to be dope. So make sure you subscribe and follow my guys. And also subscribe, like, and follow to Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Yes, man. They're killing it, man. Dopest podcast in Texas, man. For real. Woo! I'm about to be on out of here. Son, I'm on the way, man. For real. Gotta go. <laughs> Gotta go, y'all, man. For real. This was a dope one. I'm excited to be back. If you haven't already, this dope episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Yes, man. And tell a friend about the 1130 podcast. For now, I'm about to head on out of here, man. But until then, I'll see you guys next weekend. <laughs> Yo, it's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. And I'm out.